a great job. Um, yeah, remain standing just for a few moments. Um, I, have, I have saved the best for last. Get ready for a whirlwind fun trip here. We're about to have a lot of fun. In all seriousness, help me give a big Belt and Crossroads welcome to your church family, those couples that are going to come. Come on up. Let's welcome them as they come today. You may be seated. You may be seated. rocking and rolling. It is 11.55. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. All right. Introduce yourselves and your spouse, please. We'll start with you, Dawn. Okay. Yeah. I, I know we started down there, but we'll, okay, we'll, we'll switch it up. Okay. I'm Dawn, and this is my husband, Steve. I'm Carol. This is my husband, Harry. I'm Laura, and this is my husband, Jerry. I'm Rosemary, and this is my husband, Aaron. And I'm Tammy, and this is my husband, Larry. Check that box. We're good with that. All right. We made it that far. Um, I'm going to start with Steve and Don. Um, same as questions I asked you the first service. Do you talk about everything? Well, in the first service, my answer right away was no. <laughs> but um, I failed to really give an explanation of why it was no. Um, early in my, our marriage, we tried to talk about everything. But I soon realized, like, my background, I came from a family that was very verbal and outspoken and loud. And my husband came from a very quiet family and he was very reserved and it took a lot to get him to you know, express his feelings, express his thoughts. And I soon came to realize that there were just some things that um, he, you know, he was not gonna be able to talk about or he didn't really need to hear from me. Like we, us women, we do a lot of talking and all of our emotions and things like that. And, you know, it, t it took a while to realize that they're just not on that same um, wavelength or whatever. So no matter how, how much I ranted and raved and talked about my feelings, he wasn't <laughs> going to get it. So it really wasn't any, any use to do that. So that was where community and where, you know, fellowship with other women in the church is really essential because we can lay out all of our, you know, emotional, gushy stuff, and then we can go home and talk to our husband reasonably and, you know, get him to communicate. <laughs> Steve? Well, there's a lot of truth to what she said because it was very difficult for me to learn how to express my thoughts. I could, I could communicate in a lot of other ways. Um, I've spent my work, working career in public life, so I've learned how to communicate and share, but... Um, affectively, not so much. But through the years, um, by the grace and the help of God and by, you know, really working at it, I found that most guys can learn how to share if they really want to. And I think that's the bottom line for a lot of us in many relationships like this. It's what we want to do. If we want to make it work, we can make it work. And the Lord will give us more than enough grace to do that. But that decision is always up to the couple, and it's always going to be the one determinant in how successful their marriage is going to be, the, the extent to which they really want it to happen. Amen. Good stuff. I'm going to toss and punt the ball down here to Larry and Tammy. Different question uh, than the first service. What role has church played in the health of your marriage, raising kids, all of that? Um, church has been critical. Um, first 10 years of our marriage was just complete and total chaos. It was turmoil. Um, people often say, if surprise one of us, you know, we didn't kill each other. Um, lot, if the Bible said don't do it, we did it. Um, and we came into the church about 16 years ago, and coming full circle, our, my first Bible study in this church was Harry and Jerry up in the classroom up there. Um, Steve has kind of adopted me as a spiritual father. I go to him for an awful lot of wisdom. And Aaron has spoke so prophetically over my life that, I mean, he, he's predicted things through the Holy Spirit that I never thought I could accomplish. 
and I have to, as a, as a man, I have to lead my family in this journey. That's good. Um, so it's not, you know, I don't compartmentalize. I talked to some of the men yesterday. I don't compartmentalize things where it's job and church, and it's all one big thing. I bring my family to church. I take my family to the job. Uh, obviously, I don't want to see all the gory details of the things that I do, but I have to go ahead, like, uh, you know, when we go out there and we go to community events, like, whatever, my wife comes along and supports me. I've learned to fight the battles, and she covers me in prayer. She's my sniper. I told the first group that she's like my Chris Kyle. You know, I mean, she she covers my flanks. Uh, she protects my back through prayer. And through that, we've raised two wonderful children. Amen. Um, in the first service, I explained. Um, I grew up in, a ch- in church and was kind of hurt by church. Um, and God took me away. Um, and I was able to deal with that, but each one of these ladies up here, um, they have all poured into me. When I first got to the church, I didn't even know how to pray, guys. Then I was like, I don't even know. They're like, you got to pray together. I'm like, I don't even know how to pray for myself. Um, but they have all poured into me, and I think just like last year going through a really tough time, it was just me and my son at home, and uh, my husband was over in Quantico, and there were days that I, I couldn't even get out of bed. I, it was hard to breathe. And ladies within this church that knew my situation that was going on, they may not have been there every single day going, come on, you can do this. But they were in the background. They were praying. They were lifting me up when, when I couldn't go. And I feel like that the, the younger generation need to be pouring, you know, getting to know all yeah. of us that have already walked that walk because they were able to just be able to give me godly counsel and just really pray over us. And I think it's really important. I mean, I, I often say my angel is sitting over here uh, in the chair he, when he moved in next to us uh, and got us into church. Their family just every Friday was really just going, we're going to come to church, right? So had they, we finally said yes, and we actually came, and we've been here since. So Amen. It's been, been very important to Amen. us. I agree. I, I, I asked that question strategically for a reason because uh, life is bigger than all of us. Amen? Amen? It just is. And you need godly people to speak into your life in times of crisis. Period. In crisis, do not have ungodly people speaking into your life. I hear my heart. We're not better than ungodly people. We're not better than people who aren't saved. We're just saying when it comes to critical decisions... I want the voice of God speaking to me, not the voice of the culture. So while your friend may have the best intentions, their heart can be misguided. All right? So to Aaron and Rose, um, we want to talk about that practical theology. How did you guys get to where you are today after almost 40 years of marriage? Or There we go. <laughs> She's setting you up, dude. So... <laughs> How did we get to where, where we are? I've uh, been one that I always believed in love. Love conquers all. And I instill uh, in to our children that uh, just love. My, my, my father had a, had a saying that when it comes to love, he had to say, and he said, I could show you better than I could tell you. That's good. So, we always show folks love, and he used to tell the girls all, all the time that uh, you just love one another. Show folks love, and I used to tell them that I can make it into glory with you mistreating me, but I can't make it in with me mistreating you. That's good. So regardless of how a person treats you, you are only responsible for your action. That's good. Towards them. God is not going to hold what they do to you. That's good. Against you. That's good. You just show folks love. Um, the church 
this church has truly been my family here. There was a lot of times that my husband was going overseas or whatever, and I had no family in Texas, but my church is my family. And I thank God for them. There was so much that I've learned even since I've been in this church. And to say that I learned all of this under such a young pastor, you know, a pastor that is well, so please stop, please. Trans <laughs> it's transparent and, um, you know, it, church sometimes can be very deceptive if we get our eyes off God and start That's looking good. around among us. And so I had to get my, get my eyes fixed on Jesus and not look over there and go, oh, look at that couple over there. I just wish we could be like them. <laughs> <laughs> and not, not, you know, but um, being under such good, powerful leadership. Young people, listen to your leadership. Listen to your parents. Um, you can't do it on your own. And you're going to school to learn what used to be the three auras, but now it's a whole world different but still this foundation of looking and listening to the elders and listening to your pastor and your church family. Draw near to you. Don't let anything separate you from your church family because they have been separating you from the love of Jesus. That's good. Amen. Good. Uh, to uh, Nani and Poppy, um, Jerry and Laura, um, I actually want to ask you a different question. Um, and <laughs> I, you may wait, wait till you hear it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, everybody get their pens ready uh, so no in all seriousness uh, we have a lot of blended families in our church and you guys raised a blended family uh, young ones uh, that are now grown and have kids and now your grandparents talk about um, you know just talk about that road of bringing kids young kids into a marriage and then, then, of course, having kids together. And then, so you're, you're blending some that are older to the younger. And, you know, what that path looked like for you. How you. <laughs> well. Uh, you want me to go first? Okay. We're awful lucky um, that God put us together because. We were both in such a terrible place. We could have chosen anybody. But God had his hands on us from generations before when our great-grandparents and all prayed over us. When Jerry and I married, uh, I had two children. I had a little boy, five, and a little girl, two, Chris and Laurie. And uh, we got married, and within two years, we had two more. And... Uh, Jerry didn't have any kids before then, so he sort of came from zero to four <laughs> in two years. Good luck. <laughs> and I was kind of nuts anyway. I mean, it's just like I would <laughs> kind of stress over everything, and uh, he just hung in. He's making faces. I know he is. <laughs> He just sort of hung in there with us, and uh, he, uh, we just had to play it by ear, but we were married five years when um, my sister, who had prayed and prayed and prayed for us, we both went to church all of our lives, but we, we had a head knowledge, but we had no heart knowledge of who God really was and what he meant to us, but uh, our sister kept our kids, and we for a week, so we decided we'd go to church with her, but could that hurt, you know? We couldn't even sit down before God touched our lives and we were crying, and it was just his, his presence that was there. Amen. It wasn't anything anybody said, but we could feel God. Yeah. And so, um, but be it blending the family Sometimes it wasn't easy. I expected him to love my two children that I already had as much as he loved his brand new babies. And uh, he did. He did. Sometimes it was hard. 
and sometimes I had to help him out a little bit, but <laughs> he did it, and he is the, he, just being in church, there, we were in church every time the doors opened, just ask the kids. Noah used to sleep under the pews, and Leanne, and uh, yeah, they were involved in everything in church, and I was very strict, too strict, probably, but God was in control, and he took all the good things, and he took all the bad things, and he made it into something good, Amen. and the more that we grew in the Lord, and actually the older you get, the more you just realize that things are not as hard as you think they are. That's good. That not to stress over the little things, but just to, to hold your breath and wait a while before you open your mouth and say anything. Amen. Yeah, make some lips. Is Holly listening? Can we replay? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Easy, easy. Seriously? Like, But uh, I have some wonderful children and grandchildren (laughs) I'm so proud of. And and, uh, the two children that I came into this marriage with, to to, uh, them, this is their dad. He has loved them. He's been their dad. He's their, the grandchildren's grandfather, and they know no different, and they love him. And he has taken care of this family in an awesome way. And when you have that kind of love mixed with the love of God, and the love of God is, is blesses everything. So it's just, it's not easy, but it's, um, it just, it's work. Yeah. And prayer. Yeah. Lots of prayer. Lots of prayer. <laughs> yes. Poppy. <laughs> You know, uh, <clears throat> she just spoke the truth, you know. And there's no doubt that being in our relationship from the beginning to the end, she described it to the T. You know, there's a few things I feel short of that I think of back today because, you know, uh, I love my children, my grandchildren. I put work in front of all that when I was making the charge. And I look back and I think, why didn't I spend more time with my family then, you know? But I had a different idea that I was raised up. You work for a living six days a week and you go to church on Sunday. But uh, sure, I had more time with them back then. But I look at my children today and they take time for their families. And it blesses me to see that. They have trips in the summer, they go together and they play together and they, this type of thing right here, I I missed out on our part there and I did that myself, by putting work first. So in a marriage and in all this here, make it a family atmosphere, make everything just as Larry said, you know, take family with you wherever you go. And you look at our children and uh, nothing upsets me anymore than say your stepson or stepdaughter. I don't see that. They're my son and they're my daughter. That's good. They may have a last name. Me, it's son and daughter. And I don't want them to be treated any different than biological son and daughter. They mean a lot to me and they they do great. And my my children are successful. Thank the Lord for that. (laughs) You know. But in marriage, as you as as you look at marriage and no matter what life you come from, turn to the Lord. He can guide you and direct you. And what Laura said about going to that church that one Sunday changed our lives forever. Amen. Praise God. Good stuff. Uh, Dad and Mom, these are my parents, for those that don't know. Um, I always say that good kids don't happen by accident. Uh, my brother's not here to defend himself, so I, I will be the favorite child today. Uh, so just talk about, you know, uh, well, we grew up in a glass house. You know, there was no privacy as a pastor's kid. But, but beyond that, what is, uh, you know, how do you, how do you raise good kids in, in, in the world? What, is, what does that look like, how, how we walk that out? Well, I was just uh, thinking about all these uh, kids up here. 
like 18 or 19 or 20 of them. There was a bunch of them. And I thought about my boys when they were small like that. And uh, they were full of life. And so uh, I'd look down from the pulpit and I'd go like, you know, if you don't be quiet, you know, I'm going to come after you. And then Carol pinch their ears or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and play the piano at the same time. I don't know how she does, but she can do that. <laughs> I do have some funny, funny things. Uh, about Pastor Matt. I call him Matt. He's my son, but you call him whatever. But anyhow, <laughs> so they'd always want to do what I wanted to do, what I did. Well, we were pastoring in Caldwell 13 years, and so they were all pretty small. Matt was uh, probably five years old, four or five years old, and he said, Dad, I want to ride the, the uh, uh, ride lawnmower. And that riding lawnmower was my pride and joy, right? It was old, but it was a nice one. So I've got my movie camera going around the yard like this. He's going around. He's waving. Huh? And all I can see is through this one lens. Like, I can't see what's fixing to happen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm falling around like this, falling around like this. About the third time, I followed him right through the shed that I had <laughs> built, went through the middle of it. I laid the camera down. I, did, I still have the film. I'd show it to you sometime. I laid the camera down, still on. I said, Matt, look what you did to my sh shed. Carol said, why don't you see if he's hurt first? <laughs> <laughs> so we had fun. And I always say this, if uh, my, my boys always got something I wanted. If I wanted a motorcycle, I'd blame them for the motorcycle. I'd buy them a motorcycle and buy me a bigger one, a three-wheeler, a four-wheeler. We've been through the whole thing. The boats, uh, one day I missed them in church. I'll tell you this real quick. I missed them in church. Uh, it was on a weekday. I thought, where are these kids at? And we just built this new sanctuary, and I heard something splashing in the baptistry. They had filled the baptistry, and they were swimming. <laughs> and then I went, what are you boys doing? So we're baptizing each other. Yeah, so... <laughs> Family secrets are out, so I might as well add to it. Um, you know, we were young, married, married 20, 21. I would not recommend that to anybody these days. We were two imperfect people, got married, trusting God. He gave us two imperfect children in an imperfect home. But we made sure God was the center of our home. He had a plan for our children. I've always believed that. A man said earlier, and it was some advice my mother gave me after both the boys were born. She said, Carol, you pray for their spouse. It's important they get the right spouse. And having had three brothers, um, my mother had three daughter-in-laws, and she said, you need good daughter-in-laws, and you be a good one. And so I appreciate that advice. I have amazing daughter-in-laws. But God gave us two amazing boys, and I know it was just, um, yeah, they did crazy things. Yeah, I thumped them. Yes, I played the piano. I gave them some really ugly looks from the piano. And they were not any, with any love, for sure. Um, they would tie their shoestrings together and then get up to walk somewhere in church. And I'm quite like, oh, Lord Jesus, did they do that again? <laughs> but I just, I just want to say to all of you as parents, when you're raising your children, enjoy that. Uh, just like Jerry said, we have all put things in front of our kids. I was raised in a pastor's home, and so a long time ago, in my world, children, the pastor's kids need to be perfect. They are not. They're just like you. We are parents just like you. Give them a break. And I will say, when we came here to pastor, this church was really very kind about that. And Mostly before in Caldwell, but it is sometimes hard in ministry because you do live in a glass house and your life's supposed to be perfect. It is not. Our marriage hasn't been perfect. We've struggled like other people. We've had to pray. And I would just say one more thing today. I thank God for my great children. But as a wife and as a spouse, a husband, if you would just pray for your spouse and praise God for them. Because when you praise, even for your children, I praise God for my kids every day. It changes your attitude, and you don't see the negative. You can see the good. 
and we need to see the good in each other. And God has given us all so much goodness for us to thank him every day for that goodness. So raising good children, I'm just going to say it was all God because we have really messed up many times. But God had a plan for both our boys. And I knew that in the beginning, and we trusted him for that plan, just as he has for us. Just as he had for us to come to Belton. We came to Belton, I didn't think we'd be here long. Look, we've been here now, what, 20, uh, going on 28 years. Yeah. So, you know, in my head was one thing, God had something else. And now Matt and Holly, they're pastors. So, yeah, and John and April are gone to see Macy in Florida this weekend. But we've been so blessed to have godly children, and they've been faithful to support us in ministry when things were not always good. Our kids were always there right behind us praying for us, just as we've always supported them. Amen. You know, uh, I say a lot here, I'm going to wrap up with this, is that, you know, your prayers are eternal and they outlive you. And a lot of us are here because we had praying grandparents or maybe a great-grandparent that you never even met, but prayed over uh, the heritage, the, the kids to come. And uh, as my mom said uh, that, you, you know, Holly and I are praying over our kids. My daughter's about to go to college, and for all I know, she's going to meet her husband there. So you better bet I'm praying over that he's a godly man, that he's keeping himself pure, that he comes from a godly home, that he's involved in a local church, that he's a tither, that he's a giver, and he's generous. Because I want to just say, if you can't be generous with your money, you're not going to be generous with your spouse. Um, and so all those things. And, and so, I, I mean, that, I, my parent and... I will say this to young people too. Your parents need to confirm your choice. My, my parents confirmed my choice. Her parents confirmed her choice uh, because God works that way. And, and not that we have to have their approval, but you need their approval, you want their approval. And it's not to say that God can't take a bad situation and make it good, hear my heart. If, but I'm just saying like, you know, if you're in your 18 to 24 age and you're starting a life and all that, like. I dated ladies before Holly, women before Holly, and my mom was like, just move on. That's not your wife. You're not even in love, even though you think you are. Just go. And I was like, no, I really love her. She's like, you think you love her, but you don't. Trust me. And sure enough, she was right. She prayed him out and prayed another one in. And that's the truth. I'm glad she did, too. Lord have mercy. Amen. Uh, we're going to stand and we're going to pray. There is a lot of wisdom on this platform. There, I'm, I'm being serious. There's more wisdom on this platform, and we have a marriage counselor here on our team, and I love him, and Josh is amazing. But there's, look, there's decades of wisdom, decades of wisdom. If you call Crossroads your church home, I know I can speak for these people. Approach them. We need wisdom. We need prayer. You know, what, what would you do? Give us wisdom. Like, Holly and I do that. I go to my parents all the time, my in-laws, like, what do, I, what do we do here? We're, we're, we're at a loss. We, we need help. We do not know what to do. I told, my, I told my staff a long time ago, it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay not to know. And as parents, it's okay not to know sometimes. It's okay as husbands and wives to go to, Tammy said in the first service, like Larry too, that, like, you know, we all bookending these people here. We've, we've drawn from their wells many, many times. Like I have dipped in all of these wells of wisdom many, many times. So I know we've run a little late, but the most important thing we're going to do is pray today. Most important thing. So we're going to come down, we're going to sing and we're going to worship. I would love to see these altars full. Come and pray with any of these couples. We're going to meet you down here. So sing worship the Lord with us and let's pray today. Let's seek God.